Now to extra perspective. Since I came back to El Paso, I've been reconnecting with the people and places of the borderland. And one of the biggest changes I noticed is downtown El Paso. I lived here a decade ago and it's certainly changed a lot over the past 10 years. I recently met with one of El Paso's big mover and shakers and it's a segment we're calling People, Places and Paul. From taking in games or concerts at Southwest University Park to strolling through San Jacinto Plaza, hopping on the trolley, or enjoying the rooftop decks at some of the Borderlands social hotspots, downtown El Paso looks a lot different than it did 10 years ago. And it's been such an amazing experience for me to see it all firsthand again. Every great community and city across the country has great town downtowns. Josh Hunt, executive chairman of Mountain Star Sports Group, points out a number of new downtown landmarks from atop the West Star High Rise. One of the many additions to downtown, it was developed by Hunt Communities. This office building right here, you know, first you know new high rise in, in, in 40 years, and I think a great new a landmark for for our, our downtown. And I hope we see you know more projects of this size and scope. Uh, in, in, in downtown in years to come. The West Star building was completed in 2021. It's the highest structure in El Paso at 313 feet. This modern masterpiece complements the newly restored historic plaza and Paso del Norte hotels. And from here, dozens of stories below, you can see construction of another investment Josh Hunt and his management group have collaborated on to bring more families to the city center. You know, what's what's going to be the end outcome is a $75 million uh, uh, Children's and Science Museum uh, that's going to have uh, $40 million of, of public money and then um, $35 million in, in private money. So just like the ballpark, um, it's, it's a public-private partnership, and I think that's a way to deliver uh, excellence uh, to this community. And looking forward to the future, do you see the same thing, a lot of the public and the private uh, entities um, joining forces with you know with what's funded through taxpayer money, but also through private uh, investments as well. I, I, th I think that that's it's. I think what we see is when we when we do that and we merge the two, um, we have an alignment that that creates some some excellence. Excellence, like playing a major part in bringing the El Paso Chihuahuas, leading to the construction of the state-of-the-art Southwest University Stadium. It's also home to the Locomotive Pro Soccer Squad. One ballpark of the year, so I mean, I think the, the city, working in partnership with the city, I mean, we did a great job on, on building a, a first-class first class facility. I mean, why we got into that was to focus on, on quality of life and economic development in downtown revitalization. Revitalization, while also incorporating murals and other reminders of El Paso's rich culture on full display. With the revitalization effort continuing here in downtown El Paso, it's very exciting to also see that with all the structures going up, a majority of them still pay tribute to El Paso's past. And in this case, the spot where the El Paso Chihuahuas play, look right behind me. They have a dedication to Bowie High School's baseball team, which was the last state championship squad until Socorro won it many years later. And the pride was certainly evident here at Socorro High School, as you can see. There was in fact, my first report when I initially started at KVIA 14 years ago was just that, a celebration in Socorro for its baseball team, which also has a mural that can be seen by all who attend the Chihuahua games. In fact, when I first left ABC7 in 2013, the El Paso Chihuahuas first started playing and the stadium wasn't ready, so they were playing their home games in Tucson, Tucson yep, and they were right. still the El Paso Chihuahuas. And I was reporting in Tucson, so it was kind of weird because a lot of people joked around and said that I was traded for the Chihuahuas because <laughs> the Tucson Padres came over here to El Paso, and then I went yeah. to Tucson to start my new job and be back in my hometown with family and the whole nine yards. But it certainly feels great to be back here. On the news and undoubtedly strolling through downtown as I continue to appreciate all the Borderland has to offer alongside my fellow El Pasoans. We'll have more stories with these special reports that we're calling People, Places, and Paul throughout the week. Next up, a report from Socorro at La Purisima Mission. It's been a lot of fun for you, I'm sure, to be able to see all those things, especially from up high like that. Oh, definitely. And, of course, that's the highest building in El Paso. So to yeah. get that, especially seeing the El Paso the stadium where the Chihuahuas play behind you and all of Juarez, 
Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an appreciation that all of us in El Paso have for downtown, seeing it from a different perspective. And so, I'm excited to get to know downtown more because I yeah. still haven't been to the top of the plaza building yet. Oh, there you go. That's your next stop.